So we uh, want to work on a log frame and we are going to start from uh, scratch, okay? Uh, so a log frame is uh, basically done in form of a table and it is usually called a four by four. Um, we are going to see why it's called a four by four. I don't know whether it's a four by four or a four by five. Uh, but uh, we start with a table, a, just a plain table. I want to first of all uh, say log frame. So please follow me. Uh, so I need you, by, by now I'm expecting you have a, something like this on your laptop or on your machine, or you have a, a full scap or a paper where you are ready to draw a table uh, as I draw mine. Once we have the superstructure, the other things are going to be much easier for us to um, to engage. Uh, I think it should be something like that. So I'll just uh, call this the uh, first part description. Um, yeah, I'll start with that one first, just start with that one. Mm. I'll just make it a little bit longer so that we can. Now, I want to use, uh, maybe we can, someone can uh, volunteer their project. Uh, we use it uh, to, to come up with this. Uh, anyone who wants to volunteer your project? Anyone? Anyone? I can volunteer, Doc. Ah, Martin. Now, um, help us a little bit to understand your project. Uh, just take a minute and tell us what exactly is your project involved in and what are, exactly are you doing? My project, my project is to reduce high rate of teenage pregnancy among school going females in Gwembe District Hospital or Gwembe District in southern province of Zambia. Okay, reduce uh, the rate. Are we reducing the high rate or are we reducing the rate? They reduce high rate, reducing high rate of um, teen pregnancies. Okay, I don't know whether we need to put the word high. Okay. Uh, so let's first of all say reduce the rate of or teenage pregnancies. Uh, pregnancies. Where? Uh, in Gwembe district. Gwembe. Yeah, among school going, among the school going female in Gwembe district. Uh, reduce uh, the rate of teenage pregnancies in Gwembe uh, district. District. Yes. Okay. Now, had you did you have like a baseline in terms of uh, what is the current uh, what is the current rate out of every 100 girls about what percentage uh, you know get pregnant in during teenage years uh, 45 percent so 45 percent eh? yes um and you want to uh, to reduce this one from 45 percent to what percent 20 percent 20 percent so our target is 20 percent Target 20%. Great, great. Um, what, how do you want to do this? Um, what activities or what strategy do you want to use to, to achieve this? Uh, uh, activities, uh, 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 strategies was like, I need to involve the uh, Ministry of Education, mm -hmm. as well as um, non-government organization, uh, Ministry of Health and other stakeholders on the knowledge, awareness, and the attitude and intention to add. What do you mean, what do you mean when you say involve? Um, like, like tell us exactly what you're going to do. Are you going to go and maybe have meetings with the yeah, guys so from like the ministry? For, yeah, the ministry, I really needed, a, like for Ministry of Education, I needed to hold maybe to have four meetings 
Mm-hmm. I needed to um, had someone trained, like when I have uh, the meetings with the, maybe I selected the, the old schools, like in the old schools in Gwembe, we have 28 schools. Eight so schools. Needed to, yeah, tw- 28 schools. 28 schools. So, yeah, 28 schools. So for the activities, we needed maybe to call it, uh, to, to pick um, 28 uh, on each school, we pick 28 teacher, uh, 28, uh, 28 teachers, uh, 160 teachers to be trained. So train, uh, so 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 you need to train 160 teachers, isn't it? Yes. Aha, uh-huh, great. So that that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, anything else apart from training the teachers? What else uh, do you want to do? Um. After training them, because we needed we need to train them, we need to have a word, uh, also to train, I can say, master trainer. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The master trainer, maybe we get out to uh, 28 of them that can educate these uh, 160 teachers. So train uh, 28 master trainers, eh? Y- yes. Great, 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 great. So, so that means that uh, the bulk of your uh, intervention uh, revolves around uh, training and awareness creation, isn't it? Yes, and awareness creation. Perfect, perfect. Now, with this, uh, it is possible for us to come up with a very good log frame. Now, within the context of a log frame, um, we usually call it a... Uh, uh, sometimes uh, we call it a logic model, and 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 I want to uh, mention why that is the case, because we usually move from down all the way up. Okay, so we usually start with the inputs. Okay, then we go to activities. Then we go to outputs. Then we go to outcomes. And finally, we go to impact. So inputs, we start all the way from down there. And then we go moving up, moving up, moving up. Now, I want you to, as I said earlier, I'd like you to follow me, especially on this uh, on this bit. I want to try and uh, make this one a little bit uh, visible. Um, yes, uh, maybe that would be better. I am doing this so that I can give you time to come up with uh, a superstructure. This is really the superstructure of uh, the log frame. Now, um, I need everyone to write down for your project, what are the things you will need? Now, Martin, when you will be doing this training, what are some of the things you will need? Like tangible things that you will need? Because those are the ones we call inputs. On the input? Mm-hmm. On the input. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, so on the input. Um... Sorry, you've, you've muted. Please unmute. Please unmute. Go ahead. Uh, we, needed, we needed the stuff. What kind of stuff? The trainers? Yeah, the trainers to, like I said, that the teachers, as one of human, we, the, the staff, the time, I need finding. Wait, 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 wait. I hope these teachers are not the ones being trained. You see, for example, if you have one trainer and you're training 10 people, Are these 10 that you're training, are they an input to the project? Yes. Mm -mm. 
Those are your they beneficiaries. Are they are not an input, they are the beneficiaries. Exactly. Those are your beneficiaries. They are not an input. An input is something you need in order to reach that target. Like, the the yeah. target. Yes. So you uh, need trainers. What else do you need? Resources. I need, I need time. Uh huh. And, and and Mark, you're saying resources, and I'm hesitant to uh, to take that up because resources is very wide. Yeah. We can actually we... resources and, and forget about it. <laughs> so we have to be very, very specific. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we, we, Doc, Doc, we need the budget. Eh? I'm also very hesitant. Yeah. I'm also very hesitant to accept the budget. Really? No, no. I think, I think uh, say... if I can... Can you say we need training? training let, me, let me hear from Kay Mwinga. Just a minute. I think there's a point you had. Yeah, Doc, I was just suggesting, I said, as input, we need uh, resources in form of a budget. I'm very hesitant. Uh, I'm actually yeah, very uh, hesitant to put budget there, or money, or finances. Or can, can I try? I can I say uh, something? That, that okay. uh, just, just... Let, me, let me hear from yeah. Collins first. Let me hear from Collins, Uganda. Collins? Yes, can we say we need training materials? Very good. Correct. Very okay. good. Now, why, why am I hesitant to put budget or finances? Because when you have finances, then you can get a trainer. When you have finances, you can get the training materials. When you have finances, so, can I yeah. try? Can I try some? Yes. Let me let me first of all put that one the training materials. Uh, training materials. Materials. Uh -huh. Any other any other no. input? Can yes. I put? Can uh, I uh, can I come out with what I targeted? Yes, 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 yes. Let Let's hear from Martin first. Yes. So, so I, was, I was saying that I uh, had the time funding. Mm -hmm. Then trainers and the instructors, that is two or three trainer of trainers, mm -hmm. then stationery, mm -hmm. then printer, refreshment for trainers and participants, and the venue for training. Aha, uh -huh, printer, venue, uh, stationery, and all those kind of things. Uh -huh. Now, yeah. and, and, and you can put any other input that you would feel would add you know, value to your project. Okay, but I want to hope that everyone understands what an input is and you can tell us what your input is. So yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to, to, yes, Abraham. Yeah, yeah, I am like saying mm -hmm. as, as part of the inputs, the organogram will read uh, the project manager and the project team and uh, maybe the other stakeholders. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I am. I, I think if they if they also fall under the input. Um. Some people usually yeah. put, uh, um. You know, the management team because there is the there is a program team and there is the mm -hmm. the, the the management team and, and all that kind of thing. Um. But for mm -hmm. me, I usually prefer at this level we put those people who are directly involved in delivering the results. All right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So so let me let me go to I don't want to I don't want to take a lot of time on activities because I know I know on inputs because I know we have a, a bit of you know some a few things to mention on as we move up. Eh? So allow me to stop there with regard to inputs and go to activities. Now Martin we'll still come to you. What activities did you have in mind? Uh, the first, uh, like I said earlier on, activities, I said holding uh, four meetings with key stakeholders. Holding uh, stakeholder meetings, eh? Uh, yes. And uh, and create a written or a grid up and holding and conduct a training mm -hmm. per school in all 28 school. Conducting the teachers. training, right? Yes. Conducting. How many trainings? Um, conduct one training per school in all 28 schools. So conducting a 28, 
uh, trainings. Okay. So uh, we can we can we can just have that, uh, and and you can add as many activities. You can add things like identifying, identifying what, identifying the trainees, registering them, hiring a venue, and all those kind of things. Right? So uh, you can uh, have as many yeah, activities as you. Uh, that. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, can we? Before identify a whole stakeholder meeting, can he say, or uh, is it prudent to say, uh, stakeholder mapping before holding the meeting because you don't know the stakeholder? You got to do their mapping and know which one to actually invite. Exactly, exactly. So, so what we have here is just an example. Um, of course, you will have many, you'll have like 10 or 15 activities, or even 20 activities. Uh, but the most important thing is to ensure that you understand what an activity is. It is a do what? It is the thing that you do for that particular project. Perfect. Now, after that, now this is where I want us to be very keen on. Uh, we come to the output. Now, output is the thing that you get immediately after completing the activity. Now, it is, a, it, is, it is derived directly from the activity itself. For example, if our activity is holding four stakeholder meetings, Our output for that activity becomes four stakeholder meetings completed, held, completed, or you know. Yeah. What do you think would be the output for the second activity? We need, yeah. Yes, Mark. Trainees were certificated. I, I didn't get that. I said trainees were certificated upon the trainees upon the were certificated. Okay. Yeah. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Almost there. Yeah. Almost there. Martin. The the direct output would be uh -huh. twenty eight right. trainings trainings conducted. Perfect. Conducted. Perfect. Remember. We are getting the direct, the direct, we are not trying to make sense of anything. The, the point at which we make sense is between the outputs and the outcome. But from the activities and outputs, we, we don't try to make sense. We just pick it the way it is. Okay? So 28 trainings conducted. Conducted. Now, supposing I was a building five classrooms. The activity is building five classrooms. What would be my output? First classroom completed. First classroom completed? completed. Five. Five. five classrooms constructed. Yeah. Isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, supposing I was distributing uh, 100 bags of maize as relief food. That is my activity, to, to distribute or distributing 100 bags of maize. What is my output? 100 uh, bags 100, distributed. 100 distributed. Very good. 100 bags of maize distributed. Distributed. It's as simple as that. It's as simple as that. Perfect, perfect. Yes. Uh, I, I, I need... I need uh, I need, uh, I need someone from Kenya, um, especially if I have somebody from uh, the Western uh, part of Kenya, I'd be very happy for this, for the question I want to ask. But anyone from Kenya, uh, hand up. And, you know, I can tell you from the names. Uh, Linda. <laughs> Is Linda from yes, Kenya? Yes. 
Ah, Linda. Now, no, tell me. from Malawi. Oh, you're from Malawi. <laughs> Is there, yes. is there any other is there any other country? Yes, that... I just wanted to. <laughs> participants, yeah, from Malawi. <laughs> uh, participants, please get me somebody from. Yeah. <laughs> is there a name that you can see that yes, looks yes, like? Yes. Uh, yeah, Heidi. <laughs> Collins is from Western. <laughs> Collins. Yeah, I agree. Yes. So. Yeah. Hi, yeah. Collins. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. No, yeah, so I wanted to just uh, make a comment. So, but, um, can you hear me? Yes, yeah. I can so hear you. Which means, which means, uh, yeah, so which means outputs are like results that are coming from inputs, isn't it? They are, they are. But let me, let me first of all, in just one minute, let me first of all engage Collins, eh? Because I want us to understand okay, what right. output is. Collins. Okay, Yes, yes, doctor. Do you know? Do you know how to make uh, to make uh, ugali? Definitely, I do. Great, great. Uh, maybe you can explain to our international uh, students what ugali is uh, and how you do it. Ugali is a, a mixture of uh, water and uh, flour. Mm -hmm. Maize flour, in particular, isn't it? Yeah, maize. Yeah, yeah, maize flour. Uh huh. How do you? But, how do you uh, it, it it varies. You can have a mixture of maize flour and uh, cassava. You can have a mixture of maize flour and uh, millet. Okay. Uh, the 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 brown one. So if you want to prepare ugali, the first thing you do is um, you put your saucepan on fire. You put water. You wait until before before, before that before that before that Collins. Eh? Yes. What input do you need to prepare ugali? The inputs I need, I need firewood. Mm -hmm. I may need, um, actually need, I'm, depending on the source of energy that I need. Mm -hmm. I may need a uh, gas cooker, I may need uh, firewood, I may need charcoal, mm -hmm. depending on what and uh, my capacity, what I mm -hmm. have. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'll need source of fire. You need source of fire? Uh -huh. Yes, I need a uh, saucepan. Saucepan, uh-huh. I need a cooking stick. Cooking stick. I need a flour. You need flour. I need water. And you need water. Yes, I need matchbox to light the fire. <laughs> uh -huh. And of course, the person cooking it can't cook itself, can it? Yes, yes, yes. All right. So, what activities are involved in the cooking of ugali? Uh, the first activity is uh, lighting the fire. Mm -hmm. The second activity is uh, putting water in the saucepan, boiling mm -hmm. the water itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the third activity is uh, mixing the water and uh, mixing the boiled water mm -hmm. and the flour. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then stirring, isn't it? Yes, definitely. What is the output of that whole process? The output is uh, when ugali is uh, cooked. The, the 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 ready plate of ugali, isn't it? Yes, the ready plate of ugali. Absolutely. Now, uh, do we have? Thank you, thank you, colleagues. I I think uh, uh, our you know uh, colleagues have learned something. We have someone from Nigeria. Yes, anyone from Nigeria? I've always wanted to know what jollof rice is. Uh, or from West uh, uh, West Africa, I know. I've never understood what, <laughs> and probably next time we are going to. You know, learn how to make that. Eh? Uh, uh, somebody called uh, Jay Bakit. Good evening. Oh, we 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 don't have. Anyway, so yes, yes, yes. Yes, Doctor Benson. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Are you getting me clear? Very clear. Yes, I'm just like to add uh, the output for this young man. Yes. Uh, exactly. He has he conducted the 18 training. These 28 trainings conducted. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. uh, the other the, the other inputs will be uh, the uh, the the material. The training materials is distributed to the participants. Absolutely. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right, so 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 I, I want to believe that you know 
how to create an output out of an activity. If you have a challenge with that, please, uh, I'll be happy to help. Uh, but I don't think uh, there is um, there is a, a much of a challenge there. So let's let's move on to to outcome. Uh, just one minute. <laughs> so I want us to come up with an outcome uh, for, for 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 our project. Now, this is where I would want us to be very, very keen. The outcome is, and, and somebody asked whether an, an output is a result. Yes, it is a result. And by the way, what is a result within the context of monitoring and evaluation? An output is a result, an outcome is a result, and an impact is a result, right? So an outcome is the result of the output. After holding four stakeholder meetings, after conducting 28 trainings, after maybe distributing uh, sanitary towels, okay? After all those, what do we see? Now remember, we need to come back to the question on why. Why are we doing all these things? We are doing all these things to reduce teenage pregnancies. And therefore, the reduction of teenage pregnancies, which is the purpose of our project, becomes our outcome. I want to repeat that. We must ask ourselves, why are we doing all these things that we're doing? We go back to the original purpose. The original purpose is to reduce teenage pregnancies. That is why we are holding the stakeholder meetings. That's why we are doing 28 uh, trainings. And therefore, the outcome is what we achieve after doing all this. And we could say, for example, uh, we have achieved, let's say, something like a 30% reduction in teenage pregnancies. Or 20% reduction in teenage pregnancies. But the outcome must be at the level of the purpose of the project. It's, a, it's an end. You see the output is a means towards achieving something. What is that we want to achieve? Is the outcome. Let's assume, uh, I want to assume again, that we want to build classrooms in order to increase enrollment rate and therefore we say for example um, uh, our our output is five classrooms constructed just giving an example then somebody comes and tells us what was the purpose of your project the purpose of our project was to increase enrollment rate so what is your outcome we go to the field, we do our measurements, we do our monitoring and evaluation, and we say 15%, uh, we achieved 15% increase in enrollment rate. That is our outcome. Another example, let me give another example. Assuming we want to reduce uh, a mortality rate. Uh, what is this rate called? Um, 
when mothers uh, die when giving birth. Um, is that maternal? Maternal. maternal. Exactly, maternal mortality. Maternal, maternal. maternal mortality rate, isn't it? Yes. So we want to uh, train nurses to reduce maternal mortality rate. So they say 200 trained nurses. As our output. Now I need somebody to give me a possible outcome for that project. Yeah. Yes, Mark. Yeah, uh, we see 15%, 15 percent <clears throat> increment in nurses was completed. Mm -hmm. Can I try? Can I, can I put Without, in something? Ma Mark, can I Abraham, try? Abraham doesn't uh, can agree I, with can you. I resp can Abraham. I respond as well? Can yes. I try? Let, let's let's yeah, hear yeah. from Abraham and then we'll go to Martin. Eh? Abraham? Okay. For me, it is 15%. Yes. It go is ahead, 15% reduction, reduction in maternal mortality rate. Aha. Martin, do you agree with Abraham? Yes, I agree. Perfect. 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 15%. And I agree with both of you. Reduction in mm. maternal. Dr. Benzi? Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, Correct me. Mm -hmm. uh, if you come up with a particular target, then what was the baseline press? Yes. Um, now at the at the at the outcome level, mm -hmm. we do not need the baseline. We just need by how much, so that even if it was fifty percent, we know we have reduced by. 15%. If it was 20%, we know we have reduced by 15%. And therefore, this percentage reduction is not affected uh, by baseline at this level. But as we move along, we'll find other instances where we will need to have, to have the baseline. Eh? Let me give the last one. Now, the, 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 the whole point here is for you to be able to understand the difference between an output and an outcome. Okay? So, let's assume we want to um, increase uh, the average income among farmers, okay? We want to increase the average income among farmers. And therefore, uh, we say uh, something like, uh, what, what can we do to do that, uh, to, to increase average income? Maybe distribution, um, 200 bags of fertilizer distributed to farmers. Now, the reason is we wanted to increase the average income among farmers. Now, I want to engage. Uh, I want to engage Pascal Angela. Uh, Pascal, uh, good evening. Uh, Pascal, Pascal, we can't hear you. Oh, we can't seem to get hold of Pascal. Uh, Gracida Maesa from Mozambique. Good evening, Gracida. Good evening. How are you doing today? Are you still uh, with us? Are you following us? Yes, I am. Great. I want you to give it a, t a, a trial. We distributed 200 bags of fertilizers to farmers in our aim or our purpose was to increase the average income among farmers. What might be our outcome for our project? 
Our outcome would be a 15% increase in the, in the, what can I say? You're on the right in track. In the production of the farmers. You're on the right track, but just toward the end, you brought in another <laughs> indicator. <laughs> <laughs> Our, you see, you see. Let me tell you, Gracida. You see, it is possible that we can have an increase in productivity by the farmers, but that is not increasing the uh, average income. So our aim is not to increase production; it is to increase average income. So fifteen percent increase in. Income. In average, average income. Average income. Average income. <laughs> Isn't it? Or it even is. in, in si simply in income, eh? So uh, yes. in, uh, percent increase in average income among farmers. Now uh, and, 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 and I really want to agree uh, to, a, to a greater extent with, uh, with Gracida because she has brought in a very important point. Supposing, supposing our purpose for distributing these bags of fertilizer was to increase productivity per acre for every farmer. Supposing that was our purpose, then our outcome would have been what she told us. 15% increase in average productivity per acre per farmer, something like that. So the outcome is heavily influenced by our purpose. You know, remember purpose-driven life? Remember? By our purpose. Now, I need a question. Uh, if someone does not understand um, or is having a challenge with, and, I, and I'm, I would particularly want to hear, are you able to decide what your, the outcome of your project is? If you're not able, please let me know so that I can assist. Um, uh, Collins, Sue. Uh, Collins, yes, uh, Collins, so. Okay, uh, Jay uh, Bucket. Can you hear me? It's Collins. Ah, yes, yes, Collins, now yes, I can Dr. hear you. Yes, Dr. Benson. Uh, just, just a minute, uh, Bucket. Uh, let's first of all hear Collins. I'll come to you in a minute. Yes. yes. Yeah, Doc, I was, I just wanted to ask, mm -hmm. can we have more than one outcomes? Aha. Because, or we can have, during the study or during the project, we can can we can we discover? Let me, let me, let me use the word another another outcome, which and which can also help to which can also help to to measure to, the project. Yes, yeah, measure the, the, the project. Yes, yes, we can. In fact, very rare, very rare will you find a project with just one outcome, and we are only using one outcome here just for training purposes. Otherwise. Uh, most projects will have three or four outcomes. Now, each outcome has its own set of outputs, and each output has its own set of activities. Okay, and and therefore, once we are done with this uh, log frame, you realize that you can expand it as much as you like. All right, uh, Jay Bakit, good evening. You mean? Go ahead. Hello. Yes, go ahead. Yes, Dr. Benson. Yes, yes. I just need more clarifications on uh, output and outcomes. Please, mm -hmm. I'm not familiar yet. What, what is it? What is it that you are not able to understand? I don't understand the difference between the outcomes and the outputs. Now, I need I need somebody to help uh, Bakit to understand. What really is the difference 
between output and outcome. And I see uh, Silas uh, Cherotich is offering to, uh, to, to give that uh, explanation. Uh, Silas, uh, please uh, help us understand the difference between uh, output and outcome. Silas. All right. Thank you, Doctor. For um, a clear difference between output and outcome. <clears throat> the output are our immediate results after implementing our activities. Mm. These are the immediate results, mm. and um, the outcome. Our um, these are our middle results. Is is what we get after implementing. Uh, the change, the change that comes after an activity has been conducted. Uh -huh. So output is our immediate result, and the outcome is, is a change that, that, that we see after an activity has been conducted. Absolutely, absolutely. I couldn't put it um, any better. Now, and, and, and because we, we have a bit of work to do, you will allow me to uh, reduce uh, the... Uh, the comments and interactions a little bit um, so that we can be able to move faster. Uh, but I don't want to move on before going back to Collins again. Uh, Collins. Which 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 Collins Molimu? Collins Ogada. Collins Ogada. Yes. Now that we agree that uh, we can have a plate like this one of, of uh, Ugali, and we called yes. that what? We called that uh, output, isn't it? Yes. What is the outcome of that process? The outcome probably would be the number of people who have uh, eaten the ugali and uh, gotten satisfied. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that satisfaction, that that energy, that health that comes from eating that yeah. meal, isn't it? Yes, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. So allow me to stop there. Um, if if you still have the uh, challenges with uh, the out, uh, output and outcome, you realize that as we move along, it's going to get uh, uh, clearer uh, along the way. Now, the the, the, the the last bit in that logic model, what that what, what we're doing here is, is called the logic model, is um, the impact. Now, the impact what is the impact the impact is the biggest is the highest level result the impact is actually derived from the goal okay so why exactly do we want and and i want us to to keep you know going back to the source and just to keep going back to the source so I'll, I'll, I'll engage Martin. Eh? Uh, Martin, good evening. Good evening, Doc. Now, why exactly did you want to reduce teenage pregnancies? After reducing teenage pregnancies, so what? Uh, Martin? Uh, yes, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, Doc. Mm -hmm. I wanted to at least to uh, to improve this uh, this teen pregnancy or this thing to have access to education as Very well good. as uh, also to have the uh, when we reduce this they'll, they'll also reduce this every marriages which is every marriages great so 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 girls girls don't get pregnant so they they continue with school isn't it Yes. And then what? And what happens uh, when they finish school? They need to be educated. Uh -huh. They need to have independent life. Independent. So, uh -huh. Independent yeah, meaning? They need to be independent, like to be equipped with knowledge in short. Mm -hmm. How does that mm. knowledge help them in life? Um, I don't know how I can put it. We are empowered. 
empowered yeah uh-huh. empowered. Empa- what okay. do you mean by what do you mean empowered like phys- you know empowerment can be physical strength and, and and let me tell you these are questions that every donor will ask you um because we want to see what is the what is the what is the end goal what are we trying to do to have a positive result or You know, you know, positive results could be a number of things. Positive results could be, for example, reduction in poverty. Positive results mm. could be things like gender uh, equality, equity. Positive results could be... So, so we want you to define when you went to that area and, and you looked at the situation, there must be something that you saw and you're like, no, this one is caused by... Uh, teenage pregnancies or this challenge that I'm seeing here might be solved by eliminating teenage pregnancies. Yeah, I I think at some point... Let me me hear from... Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me hear from Godfrida. Godfrida, what do you think we are trying to really, really achieve here? Um... The, the 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 project that he is looking at is kind of related to something that I want to do. So <clears throat> it's very close. So I was working in an area where we had fewer girls in school <clears throat> and boys. <clears throat> then we wanted to find out why there are fewer girls in school <clears throat> and boys. We did a research <clears throat> and we discovered that it's because of who uh uh early pregnancies and uh, early marriages. Mm-hmm. And we even went deeper to find out what was causing early marriages. Mm-hmm. It was because of uh, a tradition. Uh, those young girls were tattooed with something which was making them very sexually active when they attend puberty. As mm-hmm. a result, it would be the ones that will actually be chasing after the men. Mm-hmm. Not even the main coming after them. So we discovered all that. And from that, a, res- a project was built. Mm-hmm. So to answer your question to what you are asking him, then the impact is more girls in attaining education in that area. We wanted more girls in school. Uh, that, that's okay. That's okay. And that's yeah. okay, Godfrida. But you see, yeah. is is education a means to something or is it an end in itself? It is a means. Towards achieving what? Uh, towards achieving, um, we wanted those girls to attend uh, skills or, can I say education empowerment or, I don't know. It's the English that is fair. <laughs> it, it is. A, it is a, the, the, the idea is there, but the, the English, <laughs> the English is failing us. Now, now let me let me tell you what the, what I would want all of us to do is I want you to go back and check um, the what is called the Sustainable Development Goals. Mm, SDG. Yes, SDG. the SDGs. And once you look at the SDGs, you will start to see what is called the highest level result for every project. And, 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 and allow me to, to uh, display them here in just one minute. The highest level results for any project. The reason as to why you're doing what you're doing is in order for you to achieve one of these. And, and, and I am imagining that if you're dealing with the teenage pregnancies, one of the things that you want to ensure never happens to those girls is the issue of poverty. You want to eliminate poverty. You also want to deal, for example, with issues of food security. Gender equality. Gender okay. equality, exactly, gender equality. Uh, quality education, clean water and sanitation, and all that kind of thing. 
So, so, so my thinking is that your impact could be improved gender equality or reduced poverty in my imagination. But you need to ask yourself and, and, and you need to be very clear. Why, why am I doing this? What is the end goal? What is the end game, so to speak? Okay. Now, Martin, uh, would we be too lost to say that uh, your impact is a reduction in poverty? Would we be too lost? Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> so, 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 so we yeah. could say yeah. poverty. Yeah. I've reduction. gotten your point. <laughs> You've gotten my yeah. point. Great. Reduction. Yes. Perfect. Reduction in poverty. So um, that is that is a very important, if you understand this process, this is a very, very important component in monitoring and evaluation. Ben, Ben. Yes. Is that uh, my joke? Yes, this is me. Yes, yes. Now, look, looking at the title of the project, can it also mean uh, the, uh, as a reduction in uh, uh, school dropout? Uh, or let's say uh, maybe dropout of girls in school or what? Yes. And, and somebody asked my joke. Somebody asked, um, is it possible for a project to have more than one outcomes? And yes, you can also have a uh, 30% reduction in uh, preg uh, teenage pregnancies, reduction in uh, dropout rate, maybe could be another outcome. You could have even another outcome that deals with performance. You know, maybe you can have like three. Sure, sure. Joma, talk to me. Yes, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, so if, 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 if I just look at the outcome, mm -hmm. this uh, 30% reduction in teenage pregnancy. Yes. Um, and then looking at that impact to so say reduction in poverty. Mm -hmm. um, the link between the two seems to be a bit... Uh, uh, um, Faint. In my, in my it's it's faint, isn't it? it? There is no direct yeah. link, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's no direct link, you know. And I I I I like what one of the colleagues, the guy who just spoke before I came in, was talking about. Mm -hmm. Um I mean if you have reduction in teenage pregnancy, uh it, the, you know, you will look at also the 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 because one of the things that, that is happening was teen age pregnancy was causing girls from dropping out from school. And so the impact will be measured probably by looking at the 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 reduction in the drop out of the teen age girls from school, uh then poverty. I think poverty would be more uh, too faint to measure. I don't know, but uh, we can discuss it later. Thank uh, you. Uh, yeah, I, I get you. I get you, Joma. And and by the way, um, you see, when we talk about the logic model, uh, you say thirty percent reduction in teenage pregnancies. When we ask ourselves what is causing these uh, teenage pregnancies. Within the context of the logic model, is that moving upwards or is that moving downwards? You see, that is moving behind because we start with what is causing the pregnancies. And that is after identifying what is causing teenage pregnancies, that is why we decided our strategy will be training. Because, you know, there could be something else that uh, is causing pregnancies that does not re 
you know require training so 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 the the cause yeah. is is behind now there should not and and i want you to get this one very clearly there should not be a direct correlation between an outcome and an impact in fact okay that's, as that's a project as a project you should no, come not on, come again come again yes uh, there should not be a visible direct correlation between the outcome and the impact yeah because as a project you are not expected, and I really hope you can take this uh, very keenly. As a project, you are not expected to achieve the impact. You are expected mm. to contribute to its achievement. There's a big difference. Very good. As a project, you cannot achieve impact, but you can contribute to its achievement. For us to be able to reduce poverty, um, allow, allow me to, to meet on the last for one minute. For us to be able to, to reduce poverty, we need somebody who is dealing with teenage pregnancies, contributing towards that. We need somebody else who is building roads, contributing towards that. We need somebody else who is building hospitals, contributing towards that. We need somebody else who is, doing, who is dealing with farmers, contributing towards that. All of us together, we are contributing towards reduction in poverty. And therefore, that is why a, a JOMA is finding a, a challenge seeing the direct link between reducing teenage pregnancies and reduction in poverty because there's no you know, uh, link. Now, there's something else that uh, JOMA said, that reduction in poverty appears to be a little bit too hard to measure. Now, at the level of the project, we are not expected uh, to measure this. Well, let me let me let me say that again because maybe we are supposed to measure because we are going to do something called a OVI. But we look at it from a macro environment. Even the measures that we use are measures that are macro in nature. They are measures that are national uh, in, in nature. And we are going to look at that when we do um, the indicators. So allow me, allow me not to dwell so much on that because I really want us to look at the indicator for each of these three for the uh, for the result so once we describe the indicators you'll find that you know some of these things are very very easy to understand now because the inputs and activities are not results sometimes they are put on the same column eh? Okay, just a minute. I want to see how I can do this. So, so, so most of the times you will see uh, log frames uh, look like this. You find the uh, uh, activities and inputs on the same row or column, the same row, uh, because uh, they don't need the second column and the third column and the fourth. Okay, because the second a column is supposed to be objectively verifiable indicator uh, or uh, OVI. Uh, that's objectively verifiable indicator. Now, uh, this is the only other key uh, column that you really, really need to 
uh, you really need to understand. And uh, I need somebody from the m &E class to explain to us a little bit about the indicator, especially the four components, the four types of indicators that we have. We talked about that yesterday. Uh, I want to hope that uh, uh, people still remember. We talked about indicators. Uh, someone to help us understand an indicator can be one, can be can be three. I'll give you the first one. An indicator can be, oh, I can see Mark is ready. Uh, Mark, an indicator can be one. Percentage. <laughs> yeah, I'm hearing someone saying percentage. Please unmute. Mark, we are on you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what actually happens, indicator can be one, two, three, up to five. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Now, based on the structure of the project. Okay, okay. There, there's somebody who is disagreeing. <laughs> Let me try. Go ahead, go ahead. Let An me indicator try. can be. Who is, who is that? Who is that trying? An indicator can be. This is Boomba. Boomba, yes, this yes. Is Boomba. Yes, yes. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, an indicator can be a percentage. So it can be a ratio. The pass. Wait, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It can be a, an average. The percentage of uh -huh. number two. The ratio of uh -huh. number three. Number three can be an average. Did, we, did I say it already? The, average, the number of the number, the number of and then the number of. Very good, very good, very good, very good. Now, there is something we said about the number in particular in relation to the others. What did we say about the number? Can I try again, Boomba? Uh, Teka, let me, let, me, let me hear from Teka. Uh, 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 Teka Bob, did, did I see you somewhere? Did I see Teka somewhere? No, it's the first time we're meeting. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Let's let's uh, let's uh, be helped by Boomba. Talk to us, Boomba. Um, if if I remember correctly, we said that um, a number should not be used for output or outcome. I mean. A number should not be used for outcome and also impact. It can only be used at output level. Okay, great. Now uh, let's let's try to get the indicators for this. We will get an indicator for the output. Okay, we'll get an output indicator. We will get an outcome indicator and we'll get an impact indicator. Let's start with the output indicator. Now, when we talk about four stakeholder meetings held and we want a tool to measure our success in that, okay? Uh, is that going to be measured right. by the percentage the ratio, the average, or the number? Number. Average. It's the number. Because we are talking about four. Four is a number, isn't it? Four is a number. Four is a number. It's not a ratio. It's not a percentage. It is not an average. It's a number. It's a street count. And, and, and uh, uh, the trick here is that in most cases, the output is always measured by the number. Okay? So, we are going to say the number of, what is the indicator there? The number of what? Number of meetings. 
the yeah. number of trained the number of stakeholders meeting held very good the number uh, of stakeholder meetings held that is our indicator for the first output how about the second output Uh, let me let me let me engage who just a minute just a minute just a minute uh order first order first dan good evening yes good evening yes i want you to try and give us the uh, the indicator for the second output okay the indicator for the second output would be the the numbers of people trained the number of people trained. Is that so? No. My joke. We are looking at trainings. We are, Can I try? Our indicator here is the training. So it will be the, the number of trainings conducted. Absolutely. Absolutely. But you are uh, you're very, very close. Okay. The number. Ben. Yes, please. Ben. Yes, yes. I think in this one, we should look on the list of attendants. That is Emmanuel, eh? Yes, Emmanuel. The list of the people attended the training. You're very right. You're very right. However, that will come in when we'll be talking about something called the means of verification. Verification. Yeah, all right. Yes, yes. But so, for this one, for this okay. case, is the number of the number of trainings yes trainings yeah trainings conducted now supposing we had yeah. another output here which uh, was reading yeah. like uh, uh 200 participants trained what would be the uh, uh indicator the number of trained participants very good very good, very good. The number of trained participants. Or oh, we can say the number of people number trained. Of participants trained. The number of trained mm -hmm. participants. Yes. yes. All right. Yes, you're right. So so we can have a, so so you're able to see you're able to see the difference between an output and an output indicator okay that's the difference now let's look at the outcome indicator let's look at the outcome indicator and uh just a minute and i want you to be thinking are we talking about a percentage um uh sajak i'm seeing somebody called sajak uh, joining us. Sajak, good evening. Sajak. I need to be sure we are in the same boat. Uh, Mohammed Kubwa. I'm seeing Mohammed. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, how are you doing? I'm very good. We, we are uh, together. You're following? Yes, sir. Ah, great, 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 great. I'm following I... all the way in Lamu. Are ah, you in Lamu? I love Lamu. I have <laughs> been to Lamu many times. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was in Lamu. Okay. The, the indicators for... You're saying the indicators for? No, the, the indicator for the outcome. Uh, is it a percentage? Is it a ratio? Is it an average or is it a number? It will be a percentage. It's a percentage. Out of so, yes. Great. So how would it read? The percentage, uh, the percentage of percentage teenage pregnancies. The percentage how, of how, how the the uh, how reduced uh, the percentage of the uh, the teenage pregnancies reduced. Okay. 
And by the way, yes. before 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 uh, we, we 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 move from there, a uh, percentage is usually the same as rate, and there's the same as profit. Yes. Hope uh, we all understand yes. that. So so we can either say the percentage of teenage pregnancies or teenage the rate of teenage pregnancies, that kind of thing. However, and you have raised a very important point that I wouldn't want to forget. To forget. Yeah. We don't say reduced. Yes. We just say uh, the rate of teenage pregnancies or teenage pregnancies rate. Because once we say reduced, we, mm -hmm. we limit our indicator to measure results in one direction, just the moving down direction. But an indicator can measure performance whether this rate goes up, because it is possible, can go up, this indicator yes. will still measure it. And if it mm -hmm. the rate goes down, it is going to measure it. So an indicator avoids the terms increased, reduced, those kind of things. Eh? And so, uh, oh. yeah, I don't, I'm going, because there, there was that the percentage reduction. So is it out of the 30%? Are you are we looking at the 30% reduction or out of because out of the 30%, there's that reduction which mm -hmm. uh, we are aiming at. Mm -hmm. Or yeah? Yes, and, and I get you. So, I get you. You see there's 30%, eh? Yes. So that's that reduction we are at 30 percent. That is our target. That is our target. Yes. But you see, it is also possible that we get uh, instead of 30 percent, we get 20 percent, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we want something to help us measure whether we actually got 30 percent or 40 percent. Uh huh. And that yardstick that we are going to use is what we are calling, mm -hmm. it's the rate, what we, in fact, the, 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 key, the key measure that we have here, we are saying we are using the rate. Mm -hmm. For example, I, I have a bottle of water here. What do you yeah. use to measure how much water is in this bottle? Milliliters or maybe liters or milliliters, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, maybe kilograms can measure, but it is not a very effective measure, isn't it? Yes. So we are saying here, what we need is rate is our best measure for this output. So if the rate goes up, we are doing a bad job. If it goes down, we are, not doing, uh, we are doing a good job. But yes. that rate is the one that we're going to use. Eh? Yes. So the rate of teenage pregnancies. Now, is there someone who doesn't understand why we don't say reduced uh, something the, the 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 rate of teenage pregnancies reduction, the reduction in the rate of teenage pregnancy? Is there someone who doesn't understand right. why we avoid the term? either reduction or increase when we are talking about an OVI. Uh, Dr. Here, here I'm, 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 I'm sort of uh, confused. The red, red has to go with time. Is it? Um, uh, am I not uh, getting? The red goes as in the time or a, a span of time. Mm -hmm. Because rate is normally is normally is it not affixed with time? It could be. It could be. You could look at it from that perspective. Eh? Yes. Um, but uh, and and you see um, when we talk about thirty percent reduction, mm -hmm. that in itself is fixed. You know, it, it, it goes together with time. Uh -huh. Because maybe we are saying, how many teenage pregnancies do we have 
in the first quarter of last year. It was oh, this oh. much. And how many did we have the first quarter of this year? This much. Mm -hmm. What is the reduction? We have a 30% reduction. Uh, in, 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 in. So you can also have, you can also decide to have percentage. Okay, the percentage of kidney strength. Because You see, you see, you see the rate. The rate is how how many teenage new teenage pregnancies are are we seeing, and how fast are they coming? Um, it, it's just like the new HIV infection rate, mm -hmm. and we can give that a percentage. What is the rate? The rate is at sixty percent. The rate is at twenty percent. The rate is at Something like that, eh? and this is 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 uh, done in, as, uh, with a certain period, whether quarterly or monthly or yearly, depending depending on the baseline that you used. Eh? Good, good. Because because if you are measuring this on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. then that is if that was your baseline, that is the same baseline you're going to to use when you're measuring this. Yeah. Good. Thank you, sir. Great, great. Excuse, excuse me, doctor. Yes, please. Can go you ahead, hear me? Go ahead. Yes, yes, like, that is Abraham, eh? Yeah. Uh, in, 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 yes, this is Abraham, yeah. Uh, in red, you, you are comparing Am I audible? Yes, you are. I can hear you. Go ahead. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, you are comparing the two. And for example, for this case, it is uh, the rate of uh, increase in teenage pregnancies. Actually, the reduction. Reduction, reduction, yes. Yeah, yeah. But but there are, there are certain points where uh, an indicator uh, is one. Uh, majorly, uh, because you are comparing. If it is not this, then it is this. So if if the if the indicator is fixed and you it is not for comparison between the two, will rate be be an appropriate measure? Um. Hmm. When you talk of, of I, I I'm not really getting what what you mean by an indicator that doesn't require comparison. My thinking is that, for example, uh, at output level, uh, we cannot say this uh, quarter we held four stakeholder meetings. Last quarter we held four stakeholder meetings. So what is the increase of what? So 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 this is static, and that is why we are using a straight number. Okay. So what you what you're describing in my understanding is you, probably you're describing an output level indicator. That doesn't require comparing, but outcome level indicator and impact level indicator, you have to compare uh, the situation as it was at the beginning and the situation as it is at the end. Okay, all right, great. So allow me to stop there with regard to the uh, outcome indicator, and we go on to impact indicator. Uh, once we are done with indicator, the other two columns are usually a walk in the park. So these first two columns are the only ones that you really, really need to understand and grasp very well. Now, um, how do we measure poverty at a national level? How do we measure, how do we tell um, the level of poverty in a country? Uh, Cyrus. Um, doctor, <clears throat> in most cases for us to measure such high level indicators, we do a survey. They could be measured through a survey. Basically, we just run a survey. And is there measure, an index? Uh, is, there, is, there, is there some sort of an index to say that the, these people are poor and these ones are not poor? 
Uh, Collins, Sue, uh, I, I need somebody to help me understand how do we measure poverty at a national level? What, what Excuse indicators me, do we use? Uh, Teka, Bob, talk to me. Yes, I will. I was. Uh, I just wanted to confirm. Can we? So sorry, I'm I'm losing you. I'm losing you, Bob. Oh, I seem to be losing Bob. We say like improved living. Aha, uh -huh. living standards. Okay, I was yeah. saying. Mm, go ahead. Yes, I was saying uh, maybe living standards of the of an area in terms of maybe affordability of like the basic needs, maybe mm -hmm. the kids going to school, mm -hmm. the parents are able to pay for the kids for their school, the rate yeah, of you're uh, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, but but now we need to have one measure that helps us capture all that because uh, an indicator needs to be very succinct, you know, succinct. Okay. Let me hear what uh, Godfrida has to say. Godfrida. Yeah, I won't be very accurate, but I think it's supposed to be the number of people in a country who are living by, is it $1 per day? Forgotten whether it's $1 per day or, uh -huh. but there's a measure that has been set here. Yes. Is it a poverty line? Yes, the poverty line. The poverty line. And I think hello, the poverty Dr. line. Hello, 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 Doctor. Yes, yes. Hello, uh, Doctor. Let, let me let me hear from Collins or Gada uh, first. Could we say uh, income versus uh, consumption? Income versus consumption. Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right, all right. Uh, uh, Collins. Per capita, per capita income. Per capita, we can use a per capita income. Per capita is what is it called? Um, is it GDP? No, no, no. no. Yeah, gross domestic product GDP is yes. the capita GDP. The, yeah, there's something per capita, something, something. Yeah. Anyway, but the most commonly used measure uh, is the poverty line that we have been told by Godfrida, and that is what is usually generally accepted uh, all over the place. So you can have uh, something, it can be a percentage, okay? Because we said the percentage can be used at either outcome and impact level. So you could say the percentage, uh, the percentage of the population, uh, population uh, living below poverty line. as simple as that. So that can be a measure at the impact level. It can be an impact level indicator, right? Now, these are the two very, very important columns that you need to understand within a, um, a log frame. Um, log the frame. other two... Uh, uh, Eroda, before you go forward, can I understand something? Yeah. Yes, oh, is that order first? Yes. Yes, order first. So, and... Um... I'm just thinking that the impact indicators, do we look at the broader picture? Yes, we look, as I said, we look at the macro level, the, the wider picture, the country level. And that is why we said you at the level of the project are not expected to achieve that. You are only expected to contribute towards the achievement. Dr. Uh, yes, that is the Majia, Majok. Yes, the, yes this is me. Now, now look, looking at the impact, mm. the impact here is a reduction in poverty. Mm. And then now, uh, when we come to indicator, uh, I was expecting it maybe to continue as positive also. 
positive reason. Uh, but now, uh, okay. it's standing like below poverty line, which is negative. So here I am somehow. So no, I will want no, to no, know. No, no, no. No, you should you shouldn't be confused by that. You see, it's a, it's an mm. indicator, not a target. If it was a target, we would say above. We want to take people above poverty line. But for reduction in poverty, we want to reduce, for example, the percentage of the population living below poverty line. That's still fine. We want to reduce the percentage of the population living below. Poverty line. That's a positive outcome. If it is above, then we want to increase the percentage of people living above poverty line. So whichever way you put it, perfectly okay. All right, now I have to go to means of verification uh, very, very fast. Uh, means of verification. Uh, this is uh, also known as MOV. Now, what is MOV in very simple terms? I want to make it very, very simple. Uh, you're telling uh, your donor, uh, I held 28 trainings. Um, where is the Martin, by the way? Martin, sorry, we hijacked your project. Where are you, Martin? No, 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 no. I'm listening. Now, I, I, I have a question for you, eh? Yes. You're given money by a donor to hold the uh, meetings. Then you hold 28 meetings. And then you go and tell the donor, I held 28 meetings. And the donor doesn't believe you. He tell you, I need I need proof. I need to see a document that can prove to me that you actually held 28 meetings. What would you place on the desk? Uh... There's, uh, I don't know, you can use, um, is it a patient where you train if they give us the money? There's a patient that you, you can use the for... Yes. The patient for who? If they've come for verification, they want to verify even the register activity. Yeah, they want to, they want to be sure that you actually held those meetings because they think you might have eaten the money. Uh, just just a minute. Uh, I want Martin to you, you know you think okay. this through. Yeah. Uh, Let, let's let's have uh, let's have someone assist Martin. W what would we what would we place on the table of the donor to show that we actually conducted that those meetings? Can I try? Can I contribute? Uh, oh, call, can I try. Collins Ogada, Hello? Collins Ogada. Uh, then we go to yes, yes Collins. Yeah, one, yes, one would be the the report of the training. The report. We have we have the we have the attendance list, the number of participants. Uh huh. You can back that with the pictorial evidence. Mm -hmm. And actually, in your report, you'll cover the sessions, what you are training on. Now, 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 now. I will, I will accept, uh, I will accept uh, attendance list signed. In fact, I'm going to qualify it and say signed attendance yes. list. Now, you see, this is an original primary document, and therefore it is more believable. A report, someone can sit under a tree somewhere and come up with a report. They can, you know, get into a coffee shop. And, but signatures, it's a little bit hard to get those signatures. But then on top of that, you can have a, a if, if you went for, um, you know, to a hotel, there's the invoice, there's the payment receipt. There are all those things that you can, you know, those original, original primary documents not the secondary documents like a, like a report. A report is fine, but a report is for uh, uh, telling us, you know, how the situation was, not for verifying. We want to verify. And that is why when, for example, auditors come to your office, they don't go to the, you know, they don't ask you the balance sheet and, okay, they will use that, but they want the original documents. Eh? 
So that's very important. So signed attendance lists and uh, uh, payment receipts. If you had a contract with a trainer, maybe the contract and those kind of things. So that is what is called means of verification. Um, what document can we place on the donor's table to verify that we have had a 30% reduction in teenage pregnancies? Doc, I want you to clarify something before moving forward. Yes, Mark. Yeah, uh, on a signing sheet, is it applicable also to pull a consultant contract payment receipt? Absolutely, absolutely. Anything that is signed, probably, or a primary document, it's going to be very, very uh, effective in, in verifying. Because we just want to prove to you know the donor that what we actually say we did, we, we actually did it. Now, uh, Cyrus, I, 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 have a, yes, I have a question for you, Cyrus. Eh? Oh, OK, OK, OK. Is there a, a government body or somewhere you can find a record of the teenage pregnancies recorded maybe in a month or I don't know? Is there somewhere we can get such a document? Yeah, uh, we, we, we can do that. Uh, um, Where is that? Um, we can get the national survey reports on teenage pregnancies. Aha, uh -huh. national survey report. But now we concentrate on the results for the area that we are focusing on, isn't it? Not the entire country, isn't it? Yes. Aha. Uh -huh. We can do a, a, a project endline survey report. Yeah, endline survey. If I told well, the project is not bad, not bad, but, me, but, me but that is something we are doing ourselves. How about the local uh, the hospital project? Can, can the local hospitals help? Yes. Can, would they have yes. some records? Yeah, the hospitals, can also, the hospitals can also provide us uh, um, the, the, the teenage pregnancy record. Yeah, because I'm thinking that the one place where a, a teenage mothers will go to is the hospital, isn't it? Yes. Yes, Ben. Yes, Emmanuel, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes, Emmanuel. Yeah, I think the the best place to check is the hospital, local hospital. Mm -hmm. Gembe as the <laughs> place where the project is conducted. Mm -hmm. But also, we can look in primary and secondary school. Uh -huh. the number, yes, the number Local of teenage records. Eh? Yes. Yeah. In my context, even at the uh, uh, police stations. Oh, police stations. Yeah. Are, they, are they record? Are they usually reported teenage pregnancies? They Accurate. are some cases. But, but actually, the police cases are not, they're very rare. They're very rare. I'm in thinking. Case Yes, they're very rare. Such so that think you don't that get a comprehensive picture, isn't it? You don't. You don't really. You don't. The so I think the, the hospital is a good uh, is a good uh, source. Eh? It yeah, is. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, Dada Banks, eh? Yeah, yes, Mark. Yeah, uh, like uh the case sharing like from uh country, we have three areas you can get document of source. Yes, you yes. get a the Ministry of Gender. And mm -hmm. children protection welfare, mm -hmm. you can get document of such the Ministry of Gender, because all those gender related issues will be in there. Then the Ministry of Edu, the Ministry of uh, of Health, mm -hmm. the Ministry of Health, all mm -hmm. the hospitals mm -hmm. and all the other facilities for under health directly. Mm -hmm. So you can you can also use their database point, point to give you such document. <clears throat> Ben? Yes, yes, please. Actually, I think we are talking about a specific project in a specific place. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yes. So, so we, we, if, if we have to check means of verification, mm -hmm. 
we have to deal in a particular place. Yeah, so because yeah. there is a means of verification that is available in an in one context that is not available yeah. in another. Right? Yes. Yeah. And actually, when you talk about the countrywide, when you mm. talk about the ministry, mm. it means that we need to check all data from the country. Mm -hmm. But now we are talking about Gembe district. Mm. So we have to look what hospital are available in that particular place that we can get the records of teenage pregnancy. So uh -huh. we check the surrounding hospital. Yeah. And, and by the way, by the way, we are, we are all right. By the way, this is information that you provide to the donor before you even sign that contract. Because the donor will ask you, what will you bring on my table? Should I want to verify? Yeah. Then you tell them, I'll bring this, I'll bring this, I'll bring this. The donor looks at it and like, mm, is this something that looks very uh, verifiable? Is it? Does it look genuine? Yeah, fine. Okay. I will accept that that is what you will bring. Okay. When, when I need to verify, I will want you to bring that. Okay, so something like that. Anyway, Doctor Ben, can I add something, please? Yes, yes, Bob. Yes, I was uh, just I, I just wanted to comment about maybe the we can use the twenty eight trainers that we've we've we can give them like um a, a, a survey a survey form mm -hmm. wherever places they'll be conducting those trainings. Maybe they'll be doing some research on the institutions the various parts of the of the district, they are able to get the information on that sheet that will have given them out mm -hmm. as a maybe a tallying a tallying sheet mm -hmm. to identify maybe on this school there are like 10 pupils who dropped out and the main reason could have been that. So maybe those that survey, that small survey you do with the trainers that we've trained. Yeah, and also yeah. give us some more tangible in, in, in information. That, that's okay. That's okay. That's that that could be very valuable. Um, but yes, we usually insist, and 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 I always say, uh, if it is possible to get external documents, mm -hmm. documents that do not originate from the project itself, that becomes more. Oh. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Now let me let me let me quickly talk about uh, the means of verification for the impact level indicator. And in this, uh, obviously, every country, if we talk about the people, uh, the percentage of the population living below the poverty line, there are those household surveys. Eh? Uh, like in Kenya, there is something called Kenya National Bureau of Statistic uh, Records. I know. I know every country has. Uh, the National Bureau of Statistics, eh? uh, you know, it could have a different name, uh, but but there's a bureau that you know deals with statistics, and that is what uh, we would need to look at. So, means of verification, very simple. Decide: uh, Do I have credible documents to show my donor? Should they request? Finally, finally, there is something called assumptions. Now, I'll go back to, I will we'll still keep starting with Martin. Uh, Martin, are you there? I'm there, Doc. Yes, now, you now, want to, you want to hold the... Uh, 28 trainings. Okay. Mm. But then yes. something beyond your control happens that makes it impossible for you to hold those trainings yes. or to not hold all of them. What, what do you think could happen that is beyond your, you have the money, you have the time, but something happens that makes it impossible for you to hold the 28 trainings. Well, what could it be? Give me an example. Sometimes it could be a political will. Sometimes you will not be allowed maybe to have if you have not allowed by the... Mm -hmm. So political interference, isn't it? Yes. Great. Now, 
it is important for the donor to know that it is it is a possibility and 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 by the way you can only put it as an assumption if it is a real risk no delete that don't don't say a risk because i i will be trying to explain the difference between an assumption and a risk if it has a real possibility of occurring then you put it as an assumption now political now i'm i'm explaining why we call it an assumption and not a risk if it is in the negative it's a risk. risk if it is in the positive is an assumption for example uh, a risk uh, would look like there will be no political interference interference that's a risk an, an assumption the political environment will remain favorable for the duration So we, we like putting an assumption instead of a risk. So that becomes an assumption. An assumption is something that has to be there. If you are to achieve your objective, that thing must be there. The, I mean, there's no way we can achieve our objective if the political environment is not favorable. So it has to be there. Now, uh, this one I, I will ask uh, the class. Supposing we have held eight training. Uh, Majok, Majok, uh, are you saying something? Doctor. Yes, yes, please. Yes, this is the yeah, I'm seeing this as positive assumption. Is it also possible to have negative assumption? If it is negative, then it's a risk. And and, and by the way, by the way, bef, bef, uh, bef, uh, there, there are some people usually see as uh, doing assumption stroke risks. Don't do that. I know, I know you will meet many log frames that are like that. But because you came to Vantage Africa School of Leadership, you should know it cannot, it can be either one of them. It can only be if it's an assumption, then it's not a risk. If it's a risk, then it's not an assumption. So if you choose to, to use risks, then stick with risks. If it is assumption, then stick with assumption. Okay. For example, if if we talk about uh, um, the weather. We say there will be no floods. There will be no floods. So there will be no floods I mean that's a, that's a risk because it's in the negative. But the weather will remain favorable. That's an assumption. The government will remain supportive. That's an assumption. The communities will remain peaceful. Instead of there won't be inter-community conflict. It doesn't say the community will remain peaceful. Uh, for those who are uh, implementing projects in, uh, uh, in, what do you call it? In pastoralist communities, you know, you can uh, go to provide some medical services to a pastoralist community. And then you wake up one day and they have left, they have gone. They have crossed the border. And you had only achieved 50% of your objective. Okay? So you don't say the community will not leave this location. 
this year. I'd rather say this community will remain within the project uh, area for the duration of the project. I hope you're getting the difference between a risk and an assumption. Yeah, that that amazing. Yes, Mark. Yeah. Uh, uh, if if we look at it practically, a assumption can also lead to risks. I hope I'm not, I'm rough on that. Mm -hmm. If you say the political environment will remain favorable, and we were discussing this somewhere around uh, the middle of the year going to an election, and the project is still running, unfortunately, the election went and the incumbent did not win and they tried to destabilize things. But our assumption was there that it would be favorable. And they see assumption can also lead to risk based on the unveiling circumstances within the activities. Well, well, um, you, you have a point. Um, um, but if you look at it, uh, there are really two sides of the coin. There are really two sides of the coin. Uh, because that means the absence of favorable environment politically will impact on our project. It's as simple as that. Okay. Now, I want to know, imagine you have conducted 28 trainings, but something happens that still, even after the trainings, the rates of pregnancies are still going up. What could that happen? What could be? What could that be? Something that uh, pushes up pregnancy rates, despite the fact that we've done all the training. Yeah. Uh, it means that your theory of change was not conducted in rough way. Maybe you use a run theory for that particular well, situation well that could be it that could be it but but even if we we did we had the right theory of change eh? there are things that could happen that we had not foreseen for example i'm told that uh, during uh, covid when people were in lockdown and children were not going to school there were so many cases of teenage pregnancy, isn't it? Right. So that means that is something that has happened that has contributed to an increase in teenage pregnancies despite the interventions that we are coming up with. Okay? So, um, I don't know. I don't know how you, how you would uh, want to put it. Or, for example the government policy bans a, a sex education in schools. Okay, and, and that is what you are, you are training these teachers to go and do. But the government says, nah. All right? So, so we could say something like the government policies will remain, uh, uh, or the government will remain supportive. Uh, we remain supportive of the initiative. And finally, we can have a situation where we do not have a single teenage pregnancy in that area. None, zero. But still, poverty rates are going up. Okay? What could that be? Maybe it could be something like inflation or drought, or what else, whatever it could be, okay? Again, you could say uh, maybe the inflation rate. Uh, we'll remain within 
acceptable levels. I don't know what acceptable levels are, right? But, but, but that could be an assumption. So, so this is the superstructure of a log frame. And from this, you can, you can make it as big as you want. And wherever you go around the world, this will be the superstructure that you're going to meet. I would want you to take time and develop yours. Try to develop yours. Because if you can be able to develop a log frame, a correct one, from the beginning to the end, um, then you're miles ahead in terms of uh, you know anything to do with projects, whether it is project management, monitoring, resource. Uh, for ex uh, By the way, those who are doing resource mobilization, you will need this in your proposal. Remember, we are working on a proposal. We'll need this. Uh, so someone please uh, take a, a screenshot of this and share in uh, our WhatsApp group uh, so that we can uh, be able to relook at it. Doc, 